This is Marie from Underground Crafter and welcome to part five of the Layers of Texture Infinity Scarf Crochet Along. And today I am going to be working on a stitch that I'm calling the Morse Code Stitch. Um, and basically, if you are just joining us, I am using Lion Brand Heartland for this particular uh, pattern. I used Shenandoah and Joshua Tree for the sample you see in the photos at the beginning, and I used Big Bend, which is the brown, and Glacier Bay for the sample that I'm working on today. So if you have been following us along, you'll remember that you have a color A, which for me is this Glacier Bay, the blue, and a color B, which is the Big Bend or the brown. And we have uh, finished our divider rows. And so what we're going to start with for Morse code, we're going to start with our color B in the back, which is the brown. And again, I'm going to just leave my stitch marker on that loop. Now, if you have been struggling through the intermeshing crochet, you may not remember the main details. And the main details are that you're always going to be crocheting into double crochet stitches. You're always going to be skipping chain one spaces. And we're going to be working always into the same color. So if you're using color A, your hook is only going to be going into a color A. It's never going to be going into color B, for example. And we're also doing something that we're calling front and back. And the front and back is relative to the chain one space of the other color. So if we have our double crochet of our color A in front of our double crochet uh, of our rather our chain space of our color B that would be in the front and if it's in the back where it's behind that space then it would be a double crochet in the back. We've been starting every row with a chain four which counts as a double crochet in a chain one space and now we're starting what is row 11a in the pattern. So again with color A we chained four with color B we left the yarn uh, in the back of the project. So now we're going to repeat Oh, actually, I'm sorry. No, we're not going to repeat anything yet. We're going to line up our stitches. And as we remember, the color A has an extra stitch on each side. So when we have done our divider rows, which are not interlocked, we always need to make sure we line up again. And the way that we're lining up is that our first double crochet in our color B, which is narrower than our color A piece, will be aligned with the first chain one space in our color A, which is that little box. So once we have that lined up, now all of the stitches should line up. What we're going to do is our first stitch is going to be a double crochet in the back. So for our next double crochet stitch, which is this one right here, we're going to look for the next chain one space on the brown and we're going to just push that double crochet towards the back. Oops, I'm picking up the wrong yarn here. And then we're going to do a double crochet in the back of that next blue stitch, which is the color A. Okay, great. So once we have that first one, it helps align everything a little bit more easily. Now we're going to repeat this next part, which is going to be chain one, skip one stitch, which again would always be the chain one space, and double crochet in the front of the next stitch, which is always easy when we already have the color A in the front. And then we're going to chain one and skip one, and double crochet in the back of the next stitch. Okay, and so we're going to repeat that entire thing three times. So that was the first time. So now two more times. So chain one and skip one, double crochet in the front of the next stitch, and then chain one and skip one. And again, just checking that everything's aligned, we're going to double crochet in the back. So we're going to push this double crochet towards the back of the chain one space in the other color. And then we're going to double crochet in there. Okay, so that was two times. And now one more time, we're going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the front. Oops. And then we're going to chain one and skip one and double crochet in the back. And then for the very last stitch, we're going to chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front. As we've been doing with all of our rows of our intermeshing crochet, 
we're not going to turn so we're going to switch out our stitch marker so that we don't lose our color A yarn while we're working on our color B and we're going to pick up our color B to do row 11B and I've tangled up my yarn here because I never seem to prepare for the video by clearing out the yarn so what can I say now with color B we're going to chain four one two three four and again that will count as a double crochet in a chain one space and then we're going to double crochet in the back of our next stitch which is already back here so that's nice and easy it's almost like a regular double crochet when it's already in position and now we're going to repeat this next part twice we're going to chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front so i'm just going to pull that brown towards the front and we're going to repeat that so chain one skip one and double crochet in the front so you'll notice that even though the pattern and i've talked about this in the other videos even though the stitches are interlocked there isn't any you know actually pushing through the other color or anything like that it's just that they're almost like woven and overlapping each other so now this next part we're also going to repeat twice which is going to be chain one and skip one and double crochet in the back And then we're going to do that again. So chain one and skip one. And let's just make sure that next double crochet is in the back. Yes, there it is. So that was twice. And now we're going to chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front in the next uh, two stitches. So double crochet in the front and chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front and that is going to be the end of our row 11b so again i'm going to switch out those stitch markers now a couple of people have mentioned that they find it easier to chain four and then turn rather than to turn and chain four either is fine because in crocheting there's actually no difference uh, where you do the turning chains before or after you turn so if it's more comfortable for you to chain four here two, three, four, and then turn, you can totally do it that way. Uh, what you always want to remember is when you start the row, you should have the working yarn on the side of your dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, the yarn should be at the right, and if you're left-handed, it should be at the left. Okay, so now we're going to drop the color B yarn to the front. And as I've been mentioning in all the videos, it's really important to follow the step about where to drop the yarn for color B because it makes it much easier as you continue with the pattern. So I left that at the front and now I'm working my color A row which is row 12A in the written pattern. So I've chained four and now I'm going to double crochet in the front of the next stitch which is great because that stitch is already at the front so it's nice and easy. Now I'm going to do this next part three times. I'm going to chain one, skip one of those chain one spaces and double crochet in the back of the next stitch, which is already back here, so that's great. And then chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front of the next stitch, which is right here. So that's one repeat, and I said three times, so now let's go for two. Chain one and skip one and we'll double crochet in the back. and chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front. Now I think I've mentioned this in the other videos, I always try not to just go through the single loop here but to go under both parts of the double crochet and that's just to give this more stability. Okay so that was two times so one more time we're going to chain one and skip one and we're going to double crochet in the back so make sure our color B is in the back. And then we're going to chain one and skip one and double crochet in the front. So making sure our color, did I say color B? I meant color A. Make sure our color A is in the front. So we did that three times. Now we're going to chain one and double crochet in the back of our last stitch. And we're going to drop our color A here, but we're not going to turn yet. So again, we'll switch those stitch markers. and now pick up the color B and the yarn is already in the front which is great because our next part is going to be in the front 
So we're going to chain four, and this is row 12B if you're reading the pattern. And again, that's gonna count as a double crochet in a chain one space. And then we're gonna double crochet in the front of the next stitch, so make sure your color B is in the front. And we're gonna repeat all the way across, chain one, skip one, and double crochet in the front. And we're gonna do that all the way across this row. Oops, and again, if you can, go under both of those loops to give your project a little bit more stability. And so this is gonna be row 12B. Again, it's all chain one, skip one, double crochet in the front all the way across. And then once you finish row 12B, what you're going to do is you're going to repeat rows 11 and 12, so that would be 11A, 11B, 12A, and 12B. You're going to repeat that until your piece measures about 8.5 inches from the divider rows. So again, uh, it'll be about 8.5 inches from these divider rows that aren't interlocked, so measuring from here forward. If you want to make a longer scarf or a shorter scarf, just make it about one sixth of your finished piece. And so this will be your Morse code section. And when you're done, you'll be almost finished with the scarf. We just have one more section and the finishing, which will be out in a couple of days. Thanks so much for watching and please do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. Have a great day.